In this particular demo, we're going to take a look at assembly design using more of a bottom-up approach and then take a look at just a couple of the tools that we offer in Solid Edge ST4 assembly. Now we just spent some time doing a top-down design modeling this back plate assembly, uh, but let's go ahead and pick up uh, where we just left off. I'm going to go ahead and turn off the background components, rotate the model up, and then what I'm going to do is go over to our parts library where we can grab the uh, actual beater itself and bring it into the file. Now you'll notice when I bring it into the file, Solid Edge automatically puts us in the assemble command where there are several different options for uh, types of uh, assembly relationships. And in this case, we're going to use flash fit. Flash fit kind of takes uh, what our input and determines what we're looking for. In other words, this is a plane, so it knows that we want to place either probably a planar relationship or a mate. So I'm just going to go ahead and pick the bottom of the hole and you'll notice that it, it does mate it, but it actually is in the wrong direction. So I'm going to flip it just to bring it up to the top side. Then I can place an alignment between the, any axis and the shaft on the beater. And then finally, what I want to do is I want to pick the back face of this tab sticking out. I'm going to use Quick Pick. If I hesitate, you'll see the little um, dots show up. And I can just go grab that plane and lock it into position. It'll turn it into that position and then lock it there. Now that that first beater has been placed, let's say for example a customer has several parts that they want to place and they're all the same type of part. We have a command that you can use called Capture Fit which allows you to take those relationships and save them with that particular part file. Now what it does is it saves the faces from this part that were used to place it. So when we go to place it, I'll just do a control C and for a copy and then control V to paste. You'll notice that it automatically highlights the from mating face. All I have to do is tell the system where I want to place it. So we'll pick that bottom face that uh, that puts it in on a mating condition. Then I can pick any axis to align it. And you'll notice that finally I can just pick the back of that plate and it rotates it into its position and we are good to go. So Capture Fit is a great tool for our customers to place uh, repetitive type parts that you place a lot of. Another thing that we can do in this particular assembly is we can place a gear relationship. So let's just say I want to set up a gear relationship between these two circular gears. So I'm going to pick this diameter and then I'm going to come over and I'm going to pick this diameter. Now in this case they're both going in the same direction but that's not what, how this works. This one actually needs to rotate in the opposite direction, so I can flip the option. You'll notice it changes the arrow. Once that relationship is complete, I can right mouse button click to accept it. I then need to place the from the driving shaft a relationship between this flat face and the shaft itself. It doesn't really matter which direction this turns, so we'll go ahead and right mouse button click to accept it. So I've created two gear relationships uh, between these uh, three gears here. Now what I'm going to do is actually create a motor that drives this particular shaft. And again, the direction is not that important in this case, but we could flip it if we want it to go in, in either uh, direction and then right mouse button and click to accept. Once the motor has been added, you'll notice it's added to Pathfinder if we need to make any changes to it. Whether it's a, a linear motor or circular or rotational motor, we can do that kind of uh, a change uh, through the Pathfinder. Now let's go ahead and put this in motion. We can actually simulate that motor and you'll notice it brings up this timeline and we can open the timeline up and take a look at it but in this case we'll just go ahead and collapse it so we can kinda of see what's happening and just kick it off you'll notice that the driving gear is driving the other two gears and the beaters and as I rotate or excuse me as I zoom up you'll notice how those gears are following along through that uh, through those gear relationships so it's pretty cool technology to be able to uh, watch that and to be able to set that up and kind of uh, analyze what's going to happen when that when that actual motor does turn. Now another thing that we offer in the assembly environment is to place uh, things like fasteners. And so we're going to go to the fastener system and in ST4 we've changed the fastener system interface. So I'm going to pick this particular hole 
is my top plate and I'm going to pick for the diameter and depth we pick the bottom part of that hole and it's going to bring up the fastener system interface. Now you'll notice that I'm pointing it at the DIN standard but what I want to do is I actually want to come down and pick the bottom uh, the button head screw and I'm going to add that to my stack just by clicking on it and saying add fastener. Now when it adds a fastener we obviously can change the minimum extent length. I'm going to change that to 1. I'm then going to go to the top stack <clears throat> and I'm going to pick the washer. I'm going to get the 4 uh, millimeter and add that to the stack and then we can go to the bottom stack again add the same washer but now we need to add a hexagon nut so we'll just go to the, uh, the first nut available make sure that that works you can also double click and it will add it to there the neat thing about the new interface is if I don't find the parts I'm looking for I can go to the select from library and it will bring up the standard parts library another cool thing probably the neatest thing of ST4 fastener systems is the ability to save settings once I build a stack I want to reuse it several times just save the stack that way you never have to recreate that stack again and then of course uh, when you're completed with this I'm gonna just kinda put it in view where you can see it you'll notice that we can actually preview that and you'll notice it shows us uh, what it looks like so when we're satisfied click on the OK button and the system places the fastener system in your file at that point if you need to flip it maybe you've got the wrong side to find you can easily flip the definition very quickly so that's kind of a quick look at just some of the assembly tools that we offer and there's so many more and not enough to, time to show them all but that kind of gives you a quick overview so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on the background components and go back to the top level assembly and what we want to do is finish up our design I talked about this back plate when we were designing it and we still needed to create a couple of bosses and then a vent for the air to escape the body uh, when the motor gets hot so let's go ahead and do that and what I'm going to do is I'm just simply going to in place activate into this lower uh, part of the assembly and then what I can do is go up under the thin wall command and let's just take a look at some more top-down design approach options for plastic part modeling in this case we're going to use a mounting boss it automatically puts us in a parallel reference plane so I'm going to pick this bottom face there's the orientation that I want you can change that orientation if you need to and I'm going to pick the bottom face of this particular tab that we build on our back plate it's going to put us in a sketch type view if you will or orientation and what I want to do now is just simply include this edge and all I'm going to use that for is just placement so now when I go back to the boss command and by the way it gives you feedback as to what that boss is actually going to look like and if I want to change the looks of that boss it gives us several options to do so now in this case I've saved a setting and you can, you too can create bosses and then save and save them as, as a given name so you know what each one is and then simply click to place it and then if I just pick up that included edge go to the center of it it's going to place that boss exactly uh, the way I'm looking for it to all you got to do is give it a direction and it places that boss now let's place one more of those again we're going to go off the bottom plane um, and I need it to be in the same orientation by using the N key I can rotate and get the right orientation and then what I want to do is I simply want to pick the bottom edge of that so it's at the right depth identify place that and then go back to our boss command pick up center the setting is still the same but what I want to do is I actually want to remove the 15 and just put 5 it doesn't need to be quite that offset that we had on the first one and you'll see that in a second then we can close out give it a direction and now you can see the difference in the height between that offset value 15 and 5 really neat command and allows you to, to develop bosses with supporting ribs two four however many ribs you want or none uh, you can see the different types that we've created in the model the final thing that I want to, that I think is cool is the vent sketch just from a 2d sketch we can create a very sophisticated looking vent which could have um, which can have ribs and spars now in this case we're just going to use the ribs option I'm going to identify the outside sketch 
and then I'm for the ribs I'm just going to go to single so that I can fence select all those internal uh, sketches and then we'll go directly to the direction and we want to go down into the model and you notice it'll add it to that curved surface but the really cool thing here is it is a you know it's a sophisticated vent we've added rounds we can add you know it, it we can also add uh, spars if we needed to uh, very quickly some really nice tools for plastic part design at the assembly level or in the part environment if that's how you want to work so with that we can close and go back to the top level assembly and you can kind of see how the model is starting to take place again using fastener systems gear relationships a capture fit and then some plastic part design now the next piece of this puzzle is wire harness and that's what we'll go into next